I've seen, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here, and you're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Combat Sports UK YouTube channel. Jared Miller here, returning for yet another interview. Please do excuse the bags underneath my eyes, it's a bit of an earlier start this morning. But it's a pleasure to be joined this morning by Mark Madsen, the Olympian and UFC lightweight contender. Mark, how are we this morning, mate? I'm amazing. It's an early morning as always and uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. And first off, I know it was your birthday a few weeks ago, so first off I want to say happy belated birthday from all of us here. I've also seen you've been training with a uh, fellow UFC lightweight, uh, Nazrat, Nazrat Hakparast, um, in the last few weeks. How has that training been going for you and how beneficial is it to train with fighters of that calibre? In um, I'm in Morocco right now and I'm training with Nazrat and um, amazing uh, in the stand-up game. And, you know, he's a great, great UFC fighter. So it's very, very beneficial to be tools with uh, that I consider being a brother here in, in Morocco. Obviously, the main reason we're talking today is uh, about your upcoming fight against Jared Gordon at UFC 295. I know we've touched upon your training there with Nazrat, but um, I was wondering how fight camp has gone as a whole so far. I think fight camp is going amazing. Um, it, it is going to be my first fight camp in the UFC where I'm preparing outside of the United States. So I believe this is going to be my sixth fight in the UFC and, and all of my previous fight camps I've been preparing in the, in the United States, either in at Extreme Couture in Las Vegas or at uh, Fight Ready down in, in Arizona, Scottsdale with... Uh, with the amazing team down there um, yeah. and given them, let's call it personal circumstances. I, I had to, I had to go back to Denmark with, with my family and, and take care of, of some family issues, make sure that the family was good. So this is going to be my first camp preparing for UFC fight outside of, outside of the United States. So the camp is going, uh, it's going great. I'm preparing in Denmark and, I've had the the amazing opportunity to come here and and train in Morocco with uh, with Nashrat and and hopefully um, Atman Asaita will be joining uh, later as well. So fight camp is always great, you know. Yeah, and it goes without saying that UFC two nine five is a massive event in the MMA calendar. Um, you know, it's your first time fighting at Madison Square Garden, a venue associated with some of the biggest combat sporting events throughout history. How much are you looking forward to the occasion? Huge, huge anticipation. I mean, fighting uh, in Madison Square Garden is, let's be honest, it's one of the most, the most iconic arenas around the world. Yeah. I was actually slated to, to wrestle all the way back in 2001 uh, at the World Championship, was supposed yeah. to be taken taking place at Madison Square Garden. Unfortunately, 9-11 happened and everything got cancelled. And um, so it's my first time at Madison Square Garden and I'm, I'm, I'm excited and I'm looking forward to, to being on a card with this magnitude. Yeah, definitely. And just to take it back to the fight camp quickly, um, obviously you're, you've mentioned you're in Morocco at the minute. I was wondering uh, why Morocco? Why the slight change of uh, camp this time out? And um, yeah, is there any major reasonings for that? Yeah, so uh, to be honest, uh, my wife uh, suffers from uh, MS, which was the reason we had to leave the United States and, and go back to, to Denmark. Uh, Arizona is known for the beautiful weather the very hot climate and it just didn't work out with uh with my wife's disease um we were having an amazing time in uh, in scottsdale with with the whole the whole gym and we found an amazing uh, danish community there as well so everything was was great except my, my wife was just deteriorating so we yeah. we made the decision to to go back home and it was a tough. It was a tough call because you have, you know, you have the career on the one side, wanting to to work with with the best of the best in the game, and I do believe Fight Ready at 
uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona is, is, is a gym that, that offers that. Um, but uh, on the other hand, I, you know, I'm a family person. I have to take care of my family and, and it was the right call for my family to go back to Denmark. So at the moment, I, my base is, I'm based out of, out of Denmark, just south of Copenhagen. I'm going to be doing most of my camp in, in Denmark. And then um, I have the opportunity to come here and do some short uh, trips, like a week, maybe 10, day, 10 days uh, at a time, come here and spar with uh, Nashrad and, and the team that they have here. So it's going to be a, a back and forth, but um, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited yeah. about the the setup that we managed to put together. Um, I did leave United States. I did leave the setup, but, but keep in mind, I'm a three time Olympian and I yeah. did manage to qualify for the Olympic games three times in a row. I did manage to win an Olympic uh, silver medalist um, with, you know, my base in Denmark. So yeah. let's, uh, for now, I'm just grateful, and then let's see the the result. Uh, November 11th. I'm pretty sure I'm going to bring something uh, something new to the game. Definitely. And um, your upcoming opponent in Jaron Gordon. Let's look at him more in particular. How do you see him as a fighter, and how do you think he's going to approach you as a, as an opponent coming into this fight? Well, first of all, I I see Jared Gordon as a as a great fighter. I mean, yeah. he's very well rounded. Um, looking back at some of his fights, you know, being based out of UK, you know, the fight with uh, with Patty yeah. the Batty. I I do in my book, I do believe Jared Gordon won that fight. Um, I think he's a great, great fighter, great cardio, some some good skills all around, and uh, this is the fight the UFC wanted. So this is the mm. fight they're gonna get, and uh, I'll make sure to bring in uh, the best game I have, and and I'm sure Jared's gonna bring his A game. I mean, I am fighting on his home turf, yeah. um, so. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta make sure that I bring the win, uh, and it's, it's going to have to be a, a decisive win. Yeah, well, as you've uh, brought up there, he's been on a bit of a frustrating run at the minute. Um, we've had that loss to Paddy Pimbler, which is a you say, and as many around the world say, they think maybe Gordon actually won that fight. Then coming off a no contest against uh, Bobby Green due to that head clash, do you think those frustrations that he's experienced are going to play a factor in his performance or in this fight at all? Hey, I, I don't know, Jared, personally, but based off what I know of him through the medias, I know Jared is a, is a tough fighter. He's a, he's a strong human being. The, the background, the story, the things that he, have to, that he had to overcome throughout his life, I don't think there's anything that's going to shake Jared Gordon. He's been in there. He's been, you know, competing, fighting with, some of the biggest names, Charles Oliveira. Uh, I mean, whatever life will give Jared Gordon, I'm pretty sure he he has what it takes to to bounce back. So yeah, sure, frustration, but it, it's a part of it's a part of fighting. Yeah. Now I know you won't want to give too much away from your own game, uh, but is there anything in particular you think you need to do to overcome Jared Gordon in a fight? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Um, obviously, <laughs> you. You, are, you are coming into the bout off the back of that loss to Grant Dawson, you know, even though it was quite a while ago. Um, it was a frustrating night at the office, but I ask this of a lot of fighters that I interview. Is there anything that you can learn and take from that fight and bring into this next one coming up? Absolutely. And um, I do believe we we made the biggest adjustment uh, making the decision of bringing the family back to Denmark, back to the safety, the security, the the health system we, we have in uh, the yeah. support we have in Denmark. So I do believe that played a huge part of, of that fight uh, in the lead up. I also do believe it played a huge part that Grand Dawson wasn't able to, to make the weight 
and 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 to be honest i would love to run that fight back and uh right now i'm facing jerry gordon november 11th but i am coming for grand dawson and uh let him cl climb the ranks um i'd like to have a proper a proper scrap at lightweight not a catch weight I'd like to to weigh in, have the same fair, um, whatever you call it. Man, they they screwed me over in that fight. It is what mm. it is, but I can't I can't turn uh, turn the result. But um, I'll run it back eventually. Yeah, definitely. And will you be tuning into his fight this weekend? Sure. I watch the UFC almost every weekend, and, and there's not there's not many fights that I miss. Yeah. Uh, I do believe being a fighter is, <laughs> you know, watching the the UFC, following the division is is a part of it. Just staying updated. So of course, I'm um, I'm pretty excited about that fight. Yeah, I know we all know Grant Dawson has has a strong base in 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 wrestling and grappling. Uh, yeah. But Bobby Green is hard to take down, and you know he has great hands. But uh, yeah, I do believe Grant Dawson is going to run through Bobby Green, get him down to the ground, and just crush him eventually. But uh, yeah, for sure, exciting fight. Yeah, you'll be keeping a keen eye on it. Um, and I mean, UFC two nine five. It's come about a year after that uh, Grant Dawson fight. Um, I know between the Clay Gaida and the Austin Hubbard fights as well, there was a, a bit of a layoff, but obviously due to that broken jaw as well. Um, how do you combat against those longer periods outside of the octagon? How do I come back from... How do, how do, how do you... Um, I'm trying to think of how to best word it. How do you um, overcome maybe... Not ring rust, but um, you know, keeping fit and ready to go with those long layoffs in between. I'm staying ready, staying ready yeah. every day, getting sparring in every day here in Morocco, getting to work in Denmark. I mean, competing is is something I've done throughout my career. I have more than three thousand wrestling matches. Yeah. I know how to compete. Um, ring rust is a real thing, and if you're not competing, if you're not putting yourself in that specific position where you feel the pressure, uh, where you go in there and and you know. Uh, get a sparring session in with almost a hundred percent effort uh, ring rust is real, but I, I do feel, I do feel I'm in a great position. I feel in better shape right now than I felt probably in my entire UFC career. And I still have, I still have five weeks to go. Um, one of the adjustments I've made uh, <laughs> moving back to Denmark is making sure that the cardio is on point and yeah. um, hey, I bought a rowing machine. I bought a, a rogue assault bike. I put it in my kitchen. And uh, every single day I get up, if I don't stumble upon the rowing machine, I'm on it. So yeah. the work is being put in. And, and November 11th, I'm sure we're going to have a scrap. Definitely. And we've got to talk about your UFC debut. You know, I remember watching it um, in your home country in front of those Danish fans, uh, co-main event. And, you know, you got that incredibly quick knockout of Daniel Bellardo within the first minute and a half. What was that feeling like for you? Um, and can you explain your emotions at the time? Well, obviously, it, it, it must have been must have been an amazing feeling. But when I'm in it, when I'm in fight zone, I don't necessarily goes. feel anything. Yeah. It, it, you know, there's a task at hand. There's a guy that I need to put away, and, and that's where my focus is. And I managed to do that the way I wanted to do it that night. And um, I wish for the UFC to come back to Denmark. I know there's a lot of UFC fans in Scandinavia that, that wishes for the UFC to come back to Scandinavia. And... Uh, yeah, I'm fighting Madison Square Garden, iconic arena, but I would love to fight in Scandinavia. Royal Arena, Copenhagen, sold out last time. Why not why not do it again?
Yeah, definitely. It's obviously not the only incredible achievement of your career. We've obviously brought up your wrestling before, but winning silver in the 2016 uh, Olympics in wrestling, is that your personal favourite moment throughout your career? And how did you then uh, make that transition over to mixed martial arts? I know you'd made your professional debut a bit before that. I mean, I've been... (laughs) I've been an athlete my entire life and there's looking back, there's a lot of things that I'm proud of, a lot of things that I'm looking back at and winning an Olympic medal is naturally one of them. Being a five-time world medalist is, is also something I'm proud of. I'm the most yeah. accomplished wrestler in Denmark um, of all times, which is another thing I'm very, very proud of. And um, when I made the transition into MMA, I, I, I came in with a, with a vision of, you know, on joining the UFC and and making a run for it. And um, MMA is very different from uh, from wrestling. And yeah. I'm still I'm still trying to adapt. I'm still learning. Uh, and it's been a ride. And I'm I'm equal as I am looking back at my wrestling career. Uh, and I do feel fortunate. I feel blessed that that I have had not only one career but actually two professional. Uh, careers in sports which you know not many people can say no class in one discipline or you're not right yeah and and looking uh you know at your past uh time in promotions before the ufc so in cage warriors danish mma and, and places like that we've, we've obviously seen you compete at, at welterweight as well and at catch weights as we've mentioned can we see you repeating uh, what you what the you know the weight you fought at in previous promotions and maybe moving back up again, or is lightweight the the one now? Well, I believe we've only seen me fighting catchweight when the douchebag of an opponent is not making weight. Otherwise, I've been fighting welterweight or lightweight. Yeah, I mean, in my book, if you sign a contract, if there's a weight on that contract, you make the weight. You don't come in four pounds, three pounds or whatever over and say, oh, I missed the weight. So I'm going to stay in lightweight. I'll keep fighting fighters at lightweight in the UFC. Uh, that's that's where I belong. That's where I'm going to run my, make my run. Yeah, as we've touched upon, you know, um, circumstances have meant that uh, you're not at fight ready MMA uh, this time around as much. But it's an Arizonian gym for those that don't know, uh, you know, the likes of Hen- Henry Cejudo and, and Korean Zombie have trained there in the past as well. But uh, for you coming from Denmark, obviously, how was the, what was the journey actually making your way to an Arizonian gym? Because obviously it's a long distance between the two. Yeah, but uh, you know the thing is with uh, even long distance, all it takes is a decision. You know, make the decision. Uh, we made the decision. We made the decision as a family. I, I brought over my wife. I brought over my kids, and uh, we stayed. I stayed in. in a, I've stayed in the U.S. combined almost two years, and my wife and my kids was there a whole year. Kids did the school. My wife was there supporting, and and I trained with. Uh, you know, one of the best gyms in, in the United States and yep. had the blessing of meeting the team, learning from Henry Cejudo. Um, Kelvin Gastelum joined the gym. Korean Zombie, Eric Anders was there early on. I mean, great experience. And when it when it comes to stuff like that, all it takes is really an decision, you know? Make the decision. Decide what you want to do. If you want to go at it 100%, okay, then do it. If not, pack your bag, take a shower, go sit at the couch. I mean, I'm I'm not a I'm not a 50-50 guy. I'm a I'm a 100% guy. And when whenever I want to do something, I'm going to do it probably I'm I'm going to do it to the best of my effort. Yeah, definitely. And those levels as you've mentioned in uh Fight Ready MMA, are they do you think they're indicative of the levels you can reach personally um, and how you're making those, you know, vast improvements day in, day out? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the amount of knowledge that I accumulated at Fight Ready is is substantial. Um, yeah. It goes without saying, when you work with the best of the best, you have to learn. Imagine 
imagine grappling with the Dagestani crew, Khabib, Islam Makachev, whatever. You will learn something eventually yeah. if, if you're a part of that group. So, yeah, absolutely. I learned I learned a lot and, you know, I have a lot of a lot of tools in my back and I'm still in, in contact with the, with the team. And as of a couple of days ago, I, I had a talk. So they're still, they're still on board. And, and yeah, the situation is I'm, I'm not, I'm not able to do eight weeks like I wanted to, to do in, in, in Arizona uh, because of the situation with my family. And I'm not able to bring my wife uh, because of the climate. So it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a tough, tough situation, but uh, yeah. as always, I mean, I'll, I'll get the best out of it. And uh, November 11, I have an opportunity to go in there and, and really make a statement. Definitely. And as we've brought up before, do you think these hardships or these times, maybe you're having to go through the minute, do you think they're going to be actually, it's hard to say, but uh, in terms of like beneficial for you in, in your career and you've had to come through those hardships like now and then, you know, come out the other end and and if you can win this fight it shows you know how tough a man you really are or how well you know, how much of a man you really are I should say I haven't really focused too much I, I, I mean yeah. I have Jared Gordon November 11th at Madison Square Garden I'm going to go in there I'm going to put a pace on him and I believe I have what it takes to finish him and uh it's the finish can come one way or another. I think that's the that's the biggest thing that I can really do, like control the controllables, go in there and put a performance. That is what I need to do. I'm I'm four and one in, in the UFC, so I mean I'm still undefeated in the UFC yeah. at lightweight. Yeah. So let's take it from there. Let's, yeah. Do that. The hands will always talk, yeah. right? So I'm excited. It's a great fight. It's a great opportunity. I know Jared Gordon's a tough opponent. Perfect. And have you uh, got any future goals that you wouldn't mind sharing with us, Mark? Absolutely. I'm going to win the UFC lightweight world championship. Perfect. And finally, I don't want to take too much of your time this morning, obviously, but thank you again for coming on. Um, how do you want to be remembered? And secondly, have you got any words for Jared Gordon uh, before your fight? Let's start with Jared Gordon. I mean, I to be honest, I like the guy. I think he's very... Uh, I think he's fighting for some good causes. And... Um, This is the fight the UFC wanted. This is the fight I'm going to give them. And I just want to wish Jared Gordon good luck. Uh, as always, it's an honor sharing the cage with someone. And it's going to be an honor to share the cage with, uh, with Jared Gordon. And I wish him good luck. And I, I hope I hope it's going to be ready. Perfect, mate. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come out today. Best of luck for UFC 295. And I wish the best of health for you, your wife and the rest of your family. Thank you again for coming on today. Thank you so much. Thank you, mate. Best of luck.